Hey there, how you doing? Glad you're here. Welcome to Turner Truck and Tractor. My name's Les and today we're going to work on the 67 Chevrolet and do carburetor things. What carburetor things? Well today I'm going to swap carburetors and this one runs perfectly fine. I love it. It runs great. Starts, runs good. I've got it all tuned up timing and with the jets and primaries just the way I like it and it runs great but I'm looking to see if there's anything left on the table that I may get out of it. When I built this truck and put in the 350 Chevy I topped it off with an Elderbrock 500 CFM carburetor and the reason why I did that in all the calculations 500 should be enough for a 350 Chevy below 5000 RPM which, which this one lives at. You know, I wanted good low wind torque and good throttle response, and that's why I went on the small side. Since then, Elderbrock has come out with a new model, and it's the ABS too, and I'm going to show that to you. But I also got the 650 CFM version of that instead of the 500 to see if there was any power left on the table. If there is, it's probably on the top end, and hopefully I don't give up too much on the bottom end of the RPM scale. So with that, I do have to ask a little grace from my dear departed dad. He would probably give me a little lecture about let's not fix what's br not broke. So with that, you know, I'll do it in the name of science and research and experimentation. And that he probably understand and like. So the other thing I want to do is thank you for all the additional um, subscribers the channel has gained here as of late. And it's probably due to the Harbor Freight air compressor video. That one is over 10,000 and I am shocked. All my videos, I cringe when I look at them, but it's probably because I'm in it and I just can't stand to hear myself or look at it. But that one somehow has taken off and really garnered a lot of subscribers. So if that's you, welcome and I appreciate your time and each and every one of y'all being here. So let's have some fun. Hey, while well, we're at it, I just wanted to show off my workbench that I made a while back. This is the cleanest it has ever been in probably a decade, if not more. Normally it's covered up, so take a good look. Here's the carburetor that I got. It is the Elderbrock ABS2 1905 version. And I have not had this box open yet. Hopefully it doesn't have the automatic choke right here, so hopefully that's just in the picture, a generic picture for all the boxes because I've got a manual choke on the dash and I thought well it'd be cool to keep so I've got a manual choke carburetor right now. This came in the kit. I did not buy it but it came with it. I don't know if I'll use it or not. And then while I was at it I went ahead and got a tuning kit for it in case I need it since it's 150 CFM bigger than what I have right now on the carburetor I have and I'll show you in a second I've got it tuned up if you look at the Elderbrock um, charts in the owner's manual I've got it as rich as it can be it did have the pretty infamous um, lean spot on it and so I've got the um, everything the biggest jets and needles on it and the a fuel pump on it you know well when I say fuel pump I've got it regulated to about five pounds of PSI but then the accelerator accelerator pump that's the word I'm looking for that it's set on the rich side so that carburetor might be just a little bit small but I thought with that air moving through it pretty fast it would have pretty good throttle response because bigger is not always better and I guess we're about ready to find out so let's go ahead and get ready here is the engine and I will set you down right here. Hopefully you can see it. It is a 350 Vortec headed long block that I got off of Craigslist for $1,000. And then put the serpentine belt on it, the aftermarket valve covers, an old school air cleaner, and it still has the ram horns exhaust on it. So I will set you right here and let's get to work.
gasket there, but you don't want to tear that up, and here we go. I'm going to put the gasket back on, make sure you got it ran right, make sure the carburetor studs are in there good, and whatever you do, do not drop anything down in there, or you will be in a world of hurt. We're back on the workbench and we're going to do a quick unboxing of the carburetor. I have not had this box open personally yet, so let's take a look. There's the carburetor we took off. There's the instructions. All kidding aside, do keep those, don't throw it away. There's the gasket for the top of the carburetor and then on the bottom. I have a quarter inch thick one and the reason why I have that is to give it more separation and where the carburetor doesn't get as hot sitting on that manifold as the thermal brake. And then a stud for your air cleaner. That's for the throttle linkage. All right. Come on out. Well, I'll see how you work. Set that aside. And this is the Elder Brock ABS2. How do I know? It just told me right there. And so far, it looks pretty much like. This one right here, my old 500. One thing I am gonna to have to change out is put on this banjo joint right here, cause that way it already directs my fuel in the direction I wanna go, and that way I don't have to put a unsightly rubber line or even possibly as well. In this case, in most situations, this would fit just like that to the front, cause this is where the right front of the engine and your fuel pump would sit if it had a fuel pump mechanical fuel pump but in my case i don't think it would really work for my situation so i since this is handy i will pull this off here and put it on here and let's see what else i may need there's a spacer i need to put in for the carburetor or the throttle linkage and then i think i'll be good to go so we'll be right back. Uh-huh. Let me show you what old Les was about ready to do. I was, got everything taken care of on this carburetor. I was about ready to bring it back to the truck and sit it on there. And I just happened to eyeball this, and I'm glad I did. What this um, threaded port does is give you the option to pull vacuum for your power brakes. If you already have uh, another setup like I do, which is actually just an elbow, connected to the intake manifold uh, I do not need this if I left this plug out then Les would probably be confused as to why things aren't working and once he figured it out of course it'd be just a little bit harder to get to so it's glad to figure that out and of course if you read the instructions I'm sure it talks about that there so I just wanted to tattle on myself and show you what the deal is so if you do this yourself you will remember it and not cause yourself trouble later on and this just needs to be good and tight you don't have to shower down on it because you don't want to break anything because this is all just cast metal and it doesn't bend it just at some point it'll just snap and break and then you'll be full of regret all right that should do it Now let's take it to the truck. Coming in hot. And there we go, it's home. If anything, it looks good. We'll see if it works good.
All right, it's still running, and so there's nothing left other than to take it for a drive and see what our seat dyno says. I would suspect that the carburetor might need adjusting, because one, I'm not that lucky, and two, it is straight out of the box on the truck. So that carburetor can fit on anything. So who knows how Elderbrock set it up at the factory. I would sort of suspect that since 350s are a dime a dozen, that it's probably not too far off because that's probably their bread and butter application anymore for this. So let's go take a look. All right, you're gonna see this for the first time just like myself. So we're out here on the street and I've got it just in drive, we're idling, and we're going to see how it performs. So far so good, I don't know if you noticed it did have that lean spot in it and then it took off, but then it revved up pretty good. do that again here in a moment all right we're going to go up the slight incline and I'm just going to give it all she's got see yeah yeah it fell flat just for a second and then it caught again but I will say it does have a little bit better acceleration. Okay, let me catch you up on what I did after the first test drive. I got a vacuum gauge and set it on the vacuum port and let it run. And I was pulling between 19 and 20 pounds of vacuum, which is actually pretty good. But I just have a stock cam in this and so it does create pretty good vacuum. Um, what you do with that vacuum is you adjust these screws right here for the idle mixture and you try to maximize this needle reading on this gauge and so I got it to be just right under 20 very consistently and I bottomed them out and they were pretty close on the factory it was about one and a half on one side and about one on the other so I ended up doing about one and a quarter on each side and that's where one you can also tell without a gauge where it idles the best or the fastest RPM by ear and it also has the fastest or the highest vacuum reading and then that's how you know you've optimized that and then again I moved this lever on the accelerator pump I think I called it a few other things earlier in the video but it's an accelerator pump and it's got three holes in it here we can adjust how much it squirts into the carburetor so when you give it the gas it gives a little squirt down the barrels and helps prevent that lean condition so I set that up if that doesn't work then what I'll do is on the springs that hold the rods down I will use some stronger springs to overcome that high vacuum when you have a sort of a racing cam if you will and since i'm wearing new balances maybe three-quarter cam and i'd say that tongue-in-cheek and jest but the more aggressive cam for high rpm you're going to have a lot lower vacuum reading on that so this is that spring's got to overcome the vacuum and in this case it's a pretty high vacuum so maybe a stronger spring will be my next plan of attack on this. So I'm going to go ahead and put the air filter back on and take it for a test drive and I will let you go. Uh, my next video will probably be from C10s in the Park in a couple of weeks um, at C10s in the Park 2022 in Waxahachie. If you're out there please say hi if you see me say hello would love to meet some of y'all out there and until then take care and god bless and i appreciate your time and watching this video and please like and subscribe i do appreciate it and that tells me i'm doing the right thing i want to learn and grow and make better videos all along as we go and plus i just want to have fun and hope you do too take care thank you